Greetings, hello, what's up, and a very warm welcome to all my viewers from around the world. Magpie842 here, coming at you guys today with a 1v1 live game. Featuring a spawning in the west, it's the Wehrmacht forces of Andre Torano. And spawning in the east, it's the United Kingdom forces of Joe. Uh, the map today is going to be Culloden Farm. I'm sure you're all very familiar with this. I'm just going to pan around the map whilst I uh, explain my choice of uh, game here to cast. You see, I was looking at the live game lobby just now, and uh, I saw these two playing, and there was a lot of people watching. Like, I don't know, it was like 20, 30 people watching, which I, I've never seen before. Also, one of these players, I, I think it was Jove, not sure, had um, the uh, the red um, OCF decal, uh, Operation Charlie Fox. That's the tournament decal. So this is on auto match, so he has the decal. Um, I don't know if that means he's in the tournament or what the deal is with that. I'm going to gonna Google it afterwards and um, see how easy it is to get that decal. Um, so, yeah, a bit of an interesting matchup. Looking forward to see what the players are going to bring to the table. Andre Taranio has uh, grabbed himself the Mechanized Assault Doctrine Commander straight off the bat. He's going to have access to Assault Grenadiers, and we have a squad of them moving out onto the map now. They're going to be paired up with a squad of regular Grenadiers, so we'll see how he, uh, see how he fares with that tag team. British forces electing to go uh, Tommy's then Vicar is the uh, is the build order. So uh, also uh, laying down some uh, sandbags there to make use of their increased rate of fire and heavy cover should a fight occur in that location. Scuffle up here in the north. Some assault grenadiers engaging at a pretty uh, pretty bad range for them. These Tommy's going to pick off a man and then move on down to the uh, to the low ground here. They might even get into this cover and keep pinging them. And, uh, scuffle now down in the south. Some pioneers going to be repulsed by these Tommy's. I would have thought. And, uh, Yep, that certainly seems to be the case. Uh, it's a little early for the Vermac player to have gone for Escalate to Battle Phase 1, I believe. Yep, so no tech there just now. Tommy's in heavy cover, making good use of their uh, increased rate of fire. It's possibly worth rushing out of this building and trying to force them off this point using the uh, close range firepower of the assault grenadiers. Not sure on that one. Love to see these grenadiers just move into the heavy cover, and they will, just to chip into this fight. Now, it should be enough to push back the squad of Tommy's. Being pinged by grenadiers whilst assault grenadiers are shooting at you from a building, never very fun. Wow, these grenadiers are going to take advantage of the situation to get right on in. And as soon as the Tommy's change target, you notice the assault grenadiers come sprinting out of cover. So these guys are now very flanked, and they're going to want to get out ASAP. And there they go. No danger of a squad wipe here for uh, Jove. He's going to get out just fine. Jove, of course, is a uh, player who's um, featured on the channel before. So welcome back to you, Jove. Featuring... Oh, he's got a couple of the more interesting commanders. He does have the Vanguard Operations Regiment. This is the guy with the glider, the strafing support, and the crocodile. Good stuff. Well, Vicar's going to suppress these grenadiers as they attempt to push into the British half of the map. He's also got the Special Weapons Regiment, uh, which is uh, another just just fun, cool commander that I quite like. And he's wrapping the Commando Regiment for his final choice here. Commando Regiment, a decent one. Personally, I think I prefer the Royal Engineer Regiment. But, you know, it comes down to personal preference, and Joe, almost certainly a far more accomplished UKF player than I. So... Respect his judgment on that Our one. Um, let's see, no actual combat going on right now. Chance of a scuffle here, though. No, no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to crack the tack map here and uh, give you a look at the uh, distribution of forces around the map. Looks like we've got a fight here between some Tommies in heavy cover and a Grenadier squad, so let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Now, the Grenadiers actually appear to be winning, although there is now a Vickers deploying in their rear quarter, so that is going to be bad times for them. And they're going to want to get out of that negative cover. Oh, dear, I'm not sure I like this positioning. I think standing here behind this wheelbarrow is going to be much better, just outside the range of the Vickers. You can, you can click and see the range on that Vickers, so love to see Andre uh, do that. And uh, Going up to the customary four squads of Grenadiers, yay, that Vermac players seem to really like. Um, so, uh, so yeah, he's gone assault grenadiers into four squads of grenadiers. So that's going to give him a very solid infantry presence, enough to send squads around the map. Uh, the score lineup sees the Axis behind, trailing by 18 points at the moment. Nothing too bad. Pretty standard for this point in this game. Now, Andre Tirano, he does have just enough fuel for uh, Escalate to Battle Phase 1, so I've just selected the uh, Kampfgrupper HQ. We'll uh, watch for him to click that button at some point. I believe it costs 40 fuel, yeah, so actually, and 100 manpower. So yeah, he has enough to do that, and he'll probably look to do that quite shortly. Vickers getting set up in a good position. May get a wipe on this retreating Grenadier? No. Nope. Oh, wow, but the Tommies get it. And that is the first squad wipe of the game. Andre Taranio sort of struggling a little bit for map position, sort of struggling for ground as well. Not controlling as many points as I'm sure he would like to at this stage in the game against the UKF. And... Uh, Joe taking some good fights. Now some Pioneers have just gotten their flamethrower upgrade. And they're going to get into a building which is a uh, fantastic range of pretty much all the Brit forces here. So that is a, quite a turnaround there. I like that a lot. The Grenadiers going to give chase. 
possibly. The Assault Grenadier is going to move on in. I'd love to see them take a dive to get into this heavy cover here. I think he's using his Assault Grenadiers far too defensively. I think you've got to commit them when, uh, when you can. And he's got enough munitions for a grenade barrage there, and that could have been really cool. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it does... It, it, oh, wow, the grenades require Battle Phase 1. That I didn't know. Does the rifle grenade require Battle Phase 1? It does, wow. So that Battle Phase 1 is quite delayed. I think he really needs to take that. attempting to steal our sector. Uh, yeah, I, I would love to see him take that battle phase one because uh, I fear now that he's left it fairly late. He's up to like 90 fuel. Oh, no. He's not some kind of... He's not... Oh, my... He, mm. This is this is so late now, it's basically oddball late, which makes me think he's actually just going to try and make do with MG42s, Assault Grenadiers, Grenadiers, Mortar Teams, Snipers, and everything you can get from the first uh, tier. He, I don't think he's actually going to invest in any battle phases. I think he's just going to save his money for stugs and stuff. I mean that's something you can totally do with the assault with the assault grenadier uh, mechanized assault commander. He gives you Panzer grenadiers in a in a half track. He gives you stugs. He gives you a tiger in the late game. So if you don't want to spend 40 fuel for battle phase one, 45 for two, and 45 Enemy for three, that's fuel you can save. Um, so that's a real option with this commander. Uh, so uh, I, I've never seen it used at this high level of play. So we'll have to see how it goes. Vic is set up in a decent position here, taking some fire from these grenadiers. And he'll probably be happy to keep trading for damage with that squad. I would have thought it'll out-damage the Grenadiers, yeah. Grenadiers going to bust out of the building. They're going to come around here. They're going to get right up in the face of that Vickers team. Meanwhile, Pioneer Squad with a Flamer taking that command point. Not actually going to cap it, though. And they're going to run into some Tommies. who have the medical pack upgrade. Going to lay down some flame there. Vickers team has been displaced by these Grenadiers. They'll probably, they might pick another man off that squad if they, uh, if they focus it. Now the Pioneers are going to chase. These Tommies coming down here, trying to get some vengeance for their Vickers comrades, but uh, unlikely to achieve a lot here. The Flamer's going to keep burning them from behind. Pioneers here, and that's going to, there yeah, that's going to cause the fallback. Two squads of Axis forces here, both uh, Grenadiers. Well, wow, Royal Engineers forcing a very early fallback on that one. I think he could have just run into cover, brought these guys across for a second, taken the fight, and then resumed capturing. Um... Possibly, could Andre. But uh, definitely playing a very defensive, almost tame style. Saving his resources. Now, in a second, he's going to be able to deploy the metalized assault group. There we go, it's ready now. Some mines in a fantastic position. Those Royal Engineers laying some mines here. Going to kill two or three Grenadiers. Frustrating and costly. Now, Joe, coming up to three command points. Ah, okay, okay. I was going to say, at three command points, if you take the Vanguard Commander, you can call in a glider for 530 or 540 uh, manpower. So that was going to be a real option, but now off the table because he has selected the Commando Regiment. Now this also gets a Commando Glider in session, but that one is only unlocked at four command points, so he's going to have to wait a while longer. In fact, choosing this Commander at a slightly awkward time, perhaps he thought that the Glider from this Commander was also at three. Not sure. Uh, wow. Lots of Grenadiers pushing through, uh, pushing through mid. Quite a big fight going on here. Now, where's the Vickers for the British forces? It's in a... It's kind of in a bad position, actually, right now. Getting flamed from some pioneers who are up to two star vets. So doing some good work, those pioneers. Let's just take a look here. How many kills have they got? No kills, but lots of damage dealt. And uh, it's true. I've seen them dealing a lot of damage. Now, two British for squads up in the north. One inactive at the moment. The other one pushing the Royal Engineers going to the right. I'd love to see these guys just come down here and start grabbing a point. That would be a really good thing to do. Fanning out uh, in the south are the uh, Wehrmacht forces, but the, uh, the point lead becoming a bit of an issue. I mean, just coming up to nine minutes into the game and trailing by 124 tickets. So Andre, uh, his uh, map presence and certainly his victory point control has been kind of poor this game. Um, I'm used to seeing Vermac bully the Brits a little more at this stage in the game. Uh, use of mortars and so on. In fact, you know what, a mortar squad would be really spicy. It would totally counter this MG. And it would uh, just make life really annoying. You could put you can put the mortar just behind this building here, and that would have been laying down fire that whole battle. So, I reckon a mortar is probably the right choice for Andre. Now we do have a uh, six-pounder gun coming out for the British forces. Here it is now, just rolling on. Now let's see. Uh, so he's got the company command post. Now I don't suppose he's going to spend the fuel, manpower, and time to invest in either both fours or the AEC. Since the patch, I haven't seen a single British player up and take up either of those. Both four obviously was considerably nerfed, so now it's just very good instead of being absolutely broken. Um, two units of Tommies. Wow, the veterancy on these Tommies really mounting up. And these assault grenadiers, they're, they're just feeding veterancy. I, 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 would, I would say they're probably doing no damage at this range, and they're just getting whittled down by these Tommies. Look at that firing line. Let's get a good look at that. Look at these guys. They mean business. They mean business here. Look at the rate of fire on those Lienfields. Putt, 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 putt. That's top stuff. 
so uh, yeah, um, uh, feeling like he's fed enough veteran, so he's going to get back with those um, assault grenadiers, some Royal Engineers in mid, going to displace some grenadiers. Now, how many munitions is the German player up to? About 80, so I'd like to see him get some LMG42s to start beating these Tommies at their own game. Ah, Royal Engineers. Actually, I've never seen them be used this aggressively. And obviously, the five-man squad upgrade has been completed for Andre Torano. If we uh, just take a look here. He's, he's gone for that. Now, he'll probably get weapon racks at some point. Because he hasn't gone for the special weapons commander. Oh, wow. A rifle grenade. Going to take out the Vickers. And there's a grab and an immediate fallback, I would imagine, for these guys. Unless he's going to try and deploy the Vickers. No. Actually, that would have been an interesting time to just turn the Vickers nose down that uh, six-pounder a little bit. But, uh, yep. Um... And I really like the grab on this. This brings an MG into the ranks uh, for Joe, uh, sorry for Andre, and uh, not any MG, of course, a Vickers. So a mighty potent one too. Tommy's going to grab this point to the south, but Andre finally feeling confident enough to push out onto the map. He's going to grab the middle two victory points. And if you look at the mini map, I'll bring up the tack map. The uh, command glider is circling. Here it comes. Now it looks like it's going to land somewhere around here. So let's get the camera on this location. And a reasonably good landing there, only breaking off one of the wings. A fairly high health glider has now landed. And, uh, enemy is attempting to so, steal our uh, sector. this glider, I believe, can reinforce our units. Yes. It can reinforce units, but it's not a forward fallback point. Now, I just heard on the audio an Axis squad was wiped out. Not sure where or how that happened. I imagine it's somewhere down here in the south. Enemy and uh, a scuffle is going to develop here. We've got a squad of grenadiers in a building. Pioneers on standby, but they don't have a flamer. Not this squad. Is there the flamer upgrade coming? It is not being purchased, so uh, it's not going to be a thing. Meanwhile, in mid, Pioneer's going to see off these Royal Engineers. Flamer a little too spicy for them. Now the commando squad is going to move out. Commandos, yes they were nerfed in the patch, but they are still utterly ferocious, if you ask me. They also seem to sprint once they're in combat. Was this? Stealth? They've got some kind of sprint ability when they're in combat, which is pretty cool. Makes them kind of scary fast, basically. And uh, you know what I was saying, actually? You know how mortar might be a right choice for Andre? I kind of think a sniper would suit here as well. Very uh, man, very elite infantry, manpower intensive force. Wow, these commandos could get the jump on this MG. Oh my god, they're just going to get the jump on these. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And that is a squad wipe. Commandos showing their power there. And now they're going to make a run. They could throw a light gammon bomb from this position. Love to see that. Do they have the munitions for it? Yeah, I think they can probably toss it that far. Here comes the light gammon bomb. Hup! So, let's see if these guys are going to be able to get out of there. And one guy is going to get out. I think the commandos are going to mow him down. He's in negative cover, uh, but the flame was going to save it, and the Vickers stays in German hands. Quite the result there. Really, damage limitation for Andre, uh, who's going to come in from the rear here. But again, these commandos could just run into this building and do a number on these forces. So I think he really needs a mortar and or a sniper. Pack 40 coming out. Good choice prophylactically at this point. A little early for any British armor. I don't believe we have a company command post. No, I tell a light. We have a company command post, and we have enough fuel for a Cromwell. So that pack is totally appropriate in terms of timing. 13 minutes here. Um, for a board that's looked like this the whole game, so a little mental mark there for anyone out there. Whoa, commandos just ransacking this point. I reckon they're probably, uh, they're not going to get that guy, but only just. These commandos, so much damage. They must be coming up for two-star vet. Ten kills on that squad already. Tommy's here kind of getting mugged, but these forces are going to have to fall back as well. And when they do, I'm going to crack the tack. So look at this. All of the Vermac forces are pretty much in the home sector, and that is a bad place to be. So it, I wonder how Andre is going to get out from under this. Now, six command points has been reached. Uh, I'd love to see him try and deploy either a mechanized assault group or just go for a stug. I mean, obviously, has he built any tech? Oh, wow, he did go to escalate to battle phase one. Oh, of course he did, because he's got the pack gun. <laughs> so, uh, yes, did spend 45 fuel on teching, or is it 40? I think it's 40. Uh, let me just check that. Let me just check that. Yeah, 40 fuel has been spent on teching. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, that will give him access to uh, half-tracks, Panzer Grenadiers, and uh, the old one pack gun. Oh my god, those commandos just mowing people down horribly. Now, they're going to get out of there because the Vickers is going to disperse them. Love to see the Vickers get into this building. That seems like a great position. I imagine he'll move it just now. And uh, Here comes a uh, stud three. Now, this is, of course, the short-barreled house of E. Uh, good against infantry, and I reckon that will perfectly suit the situation until the British player invests his fuel. And on seeing the Stug, I reckon a Cromwell could be a good choice. He's also got the fuel for a Firefly, which would be utterly brutal. Um, not sure a Firefly is warranted, to be honest. I think a Cromwell would be more effective. You see, the, re the reason for that is that uh, a Cromwell can easily handle a Stug, and a Cromwell can also police the field against all these infantry squads, whereas a Firefly can only handle the Stug. Um, so, uh, yep, as the announcer says, trailing now by about, uh, I don't know, let's see, that's like 200 and, well, co coming up to 200 tickets now. 
197 at the moment, uh, is, is Andre. So he's, uh, he's in a bad way. And as I say, he's got to get out from under this. His lines of play, still a lot of lines open. He's got good amount of resources. He's got a reasonable amount of uh, forces still on the board, despite having taken a bit of a beating. These commandos, are they actually being reinforced? Where are they? Uh, they are being reinforced, but they're going to move forward to the uh, horsey glider. Now, the British forces apparently redeploying to the south. No interest in uh, displacing forces to the north. Actually, no, I tell a lie. There is one squad of Tommies up to the north. So... Yeah, there's going to be a scuffle in the north, but I imagine the Wehrmacht forces one, which should take control of that. Here comes the Stug E. That's going to smash these sandbags aside and get straight on into these uh, Tommies who are going to fall back. Now, where's the quarter pounder? Here's the quarter pounder. It's repositioning. Jove by Joe, man on the spot here. Going to bring across the uh, quarter pounder to, uh, to where it's needed. Now the Vickers gets into a great position. I'm loving this, and it is one star vet. So look at the arc, look at the arc, look at the range on that. Some pioneers with the flamethrower going to garrison this building as well. The flamethrower must be just out of range of this glider, or else I think I'd see it firing. And, uh, wow, Andre kind of turning this around a little bit. I love this position of strength he has in the middle. Now there's no indirect fire currently available for the Brits. So that Vickers in the building is going to be an issue for some time. Uh, what on earth is he saving his fuel for, I wonder? Joe could have... I, I would have loved to have seen a Cromwell by now. I think a Cromwell could have been really good. Now, uh, Andre needs to pay attention, tell these guys to stop moving so that they can fire the LMG-42. And they do. The Tommies are going to get displaced. Meanwhile, back at mid, Flamers still doing well in this building, giving these Royal Engineers hell, forcing back two squads possibly there. Now, I think one squad was just falling back and running past. This Vickers is just in a brutal position, and I hope he doesn't feel tempted to relocate it. Oh, dear, he is. Because now, I think... Oh dear, oh, oh, the commandos. Maybe he was relocating it because he saw the commandos coming. Wow, God damn those commandos. And with the, with the Vickers out of this building, this pole, this, this position now, much more tenuous for the uh, for the British forces. The six pounder's gonna come across again, trying to get north and get some shots into the Stug. How much damage has the Stug done? Gotten five kills, now six, doing some good work. Here comes a light gammon bomb, and uh, Johnny on the spot with his micro is Andre. He's uh, totally on his toes, so he's gonna get them out of there. Don't think the commandos are gonna get a squad wipe. Meanwhile, to the north, pretty much uh, Axis dominance, the story up here, which is really good news for Andre because he's now off the clock and indeed it's Jove who finds himself on the clock with two points taken against him. Now the six pounder is going to force the Stug back and should destroy it using attack ground to fire through this hedge. Nicely done there. And uh, enough Pioneer squads going to be there for the repair. Wow, looks like Comet is the choice. Hammer has been taken. Comet is the choice. This tank is a beefcake, weighing in at 500 manpower and 185 fuel. Fantastic high-velocity gun on that thing, and when you buy it, the Panzer, the, sorry, not Panzer, the tank commander, as I'm sure that Jove will, he'd be a fool not to. That is quite a force to be reckoned with. I mean, it's basically a Panther, kind of on steroids, kind of not. Like, it's it's better in some ways, worse, worse than others. Um, so, uh, looking forward to seeing that. These Grenadiers in this building, you've got to feel like this is just more than they can take, especially with the commandos here. This could be a wipe, to be honest, by the time they get out of the building. Come on, get them out of there. More Grenadiers coming, but these guys need to vacate the building, and that was a terrible place to vacate. That will be a squad wipe. Oh, the LMG-42 is going to be nicked as well. Now, you don't want to grab that with the commandos. Grabbing it with the Royal Engineers is reasonable. You really want it on a Tommy squad. The reason I say that is because you can't move and shoot the LMG-42, so having it on a, on a squad which specializes in getting up close to deal its damage is usually suboptimal. Here comes some Tommies. I imagine that they're going to grab that, MG, that LMG-42. That is quite a potent piece to have. Panzer Grenadiers with Shrek's going to be out, so that's going to help against the Comet, which is now on the field and moving into the north of the map. Probably going to look to answer that Stug, which is still pretty much the only fuel investment on the field for the Axis player. Now, he's still four command points away from accessing the Tiger. So the question is, is he going to be able to weather until he can get there? And if he is, is a Tiger even going to be enough? I don't know. Because this is quite a lot of stuff coming out of Jove here as he trashes this building, rampaging through the north of the map. The tank commander has been purchased and the Comet is uh, receiving the buffs from that. Taking command of all of the victory points is Jove. And that puts Andre back on the clock in a big way, losing three victory points, losing three tickets per tick. And that's not really something he can afford right now. Now he's far from out of this game, but he's, he's on the edge now. He's on, he's, he's on the ropes and he needs, he needs to make a play and get something done. Here comes the Cromwell. Sorry, the, uh, here comes the uh, Comet. Wow, both the Panzer Shreks. Ineffective, pretty much, scoring only tiny slivers of damage into the front of that vehicle. 
the Stug's getting repaired and it'll be looked to coming back onto the field in probably about 30 or 40 seconds. So that's not going to be able to help for a while. Now the pack gun is chipping in some hits and that will that will force the Comet back. Whoa! Not before it massacres another uh, Panzer Grenadier. And an infantry squad somewhere was wiped out. I think that may have been here. Yeah, no, those are some Tommies who are wiggling on the floor. Mm. I think it was still here. I think there's maybe a grenade missed by Andre. Uh, certainly missed by me, for which I apologize. Vic is in a good position, going to get these Tommies out of here, the Stug's going to come in for a bit more damage, gets the Veteran C1, that's going to unlock the target weak point ability. That could help against the, against this Comet. Ah, the Comet's been found though. The Pack Gun needs to deploy, I don't like rushing it this far ahead. Two Shrek's going to hit the Comet, and with the Pack Gun in there, if there's a Faust on these Grenadiers, that Comet is probably toast. Lucky, look how fast that thing is, going to get out in the nick of time. That was close to a Fausting. Meanwhile, some artillery coming down on this sector. I believe that's the uh, mortar cover. Nearby teams of mortars automatically attack enemies in the target territory with a mix of high explosive and white phosphorus shells. So that's pretty That's pretty good. Uh, didn't actually catch it in action there, which would have been nice because I've not actually seen that ability used before. Let's take a look at the base for the British player. Has he opted to go for... Uh, nope, he hasn't. So the Comet is being repaired. Stug's going to try and hold the line for now. Andre now two command points away from getting the Tiger. And 150 tickets left to go. He's still on the clock though, 3 to nil. So I'm not sure he's going to make it there. And if he does, I mean, it may, it may just be too little too late. Uh, I think I think a Comet with veterancy is going to be able to duel with the Tiger. And I think um, I think certainly with as few victory points as there are going to be left on the clock. Oh, the six-pounder scores a killer blow into the front sort of flank of the... Uh, sort of the front of the flank of the uh, Stug E there. A rifle grenade used it very well times there, but the uh, three star uh, commandos just taking a toll against this pi- oh my goodness I think they're gonna get him! Pretty sure, come on! Uh, uh, they're not gonna get him! That was close as you like, that was a very lucky Grenadier. And of course at Veteran C3, commandos auto deploy smoke when they run, so uh, that's what you see that, that smoke puffing up there. LMG42 probably going to win this battle, but no, here comes a Mills Bomb, it's bang on and that'll be a squad wipe. Wow, Jove just handing it to Andre right now, and you've got to feel a little bit for the Axis player, I don't think he's made any super bad calls, but going for an awkward, slightly wonky build here, using the uh, using the assault me mechanized assault doctrine to skip out a lot of teching, I mean surely he hasn't gone for any further battle phases, no he hasn't. So, kind of a wonky build. Sometimes these work, sometimes they don't, but they're always a gamble, and I think what we're seeing right now is that gamble not quite paying. Uh, Andre down now to just 80 victory points, and Jove, if we crack the tactical map, Jove has forces everywhere. The Axis force is committing to fight, committed to fighting on the, on the doorstep of their base, and that's not really going to do them any good from a winning the game point of view. Here comes another Mills bomb, and you've got to think that's another squad wipe. Wow! Damn, the fuse on those mill bombs pretty short. The Vickers here in a good position. A Faust can attack the Comet. That's a Comet that's going to have to limp back and repair now. So that buys him a little window where Andre might be able to push out and get something achieved. Now, how much fuel is a, is a Tiger? He has enough fuel and the Tiger is deployed. He was, you can tell he was waiting for that the moment he got to 14 command points. The Tiger was chosen. And if the Tiger manages to chase the Comet, do you think... It could kill it. I don't know because it'll just be Tiger against everything. So, are there any six pounders? Well, there is a six pounder. Where is it? Is the question. It's in the north. It's redeploying to the south. So, the Tiger could chase. Now, a Tiger chasing, not the speediest thing, unlike in nature. Uh, a Tiger tank, um, not super fast. But uh, I'll take it any day over a King Tiger, believe me. Love the Tiger. I think the King Tiger is a little bit of a liability, to be honest. Now, he's going to push here, and I like this. The Comet didn't get that far back. He's just going to ram through the hedge. He didn't. Does he got? Has he set to be? Gets a massive hit into the front of the Comet, and he's just going to drive straight up to that thing. It can't escape, of course. Where's the six pounder? Where is the six pounder in all this? Six pounder's back at base. That is not where he needs it to be. Now the Tiger's going to circle around to the rear armour of the Comet, which is wise. I don't like the range he's taking this fight at, though. Oh my goodness, look at how the Comet can keep up. I suppose it does have two squads of engineers repairing it. Are there any call-ins available? Ah, oh, a light artillery barrage would seal the deal on this tank. Oh, he's going to focus the engineers. Don't think that's a wise plan. The main gun, though, has been taken out on the Comet. Wow, which is displaying its resilience. Where is the six-pounder? It's only just now moving. That is so late. Got to think that Jove was flustered a little bit. And leading the charge with the rear armor on the Panther, on the Tiger, this is a horrible idea. I don't like this reverse at all. 
He's going to have to get out the arc of the six pounder, and he just about does. Takes the comet now. He'll be lucky to salvage this tiger. I don't see a way of doing it. He's got blitz available, and he's going to have to use it. He's just going to try and circle strafe the AT gun. I think I think it has to be combat blitz reverse move at this point. No, he's going to stick in and try and do this. In the meantime, he's taking ground at the bottom of the map, so keep your eyes on the mini map. I'm going to focus on this because this is. Oh no, that's the hit there. The main tank, the main gun is down. He can still use Combat Blitz and get out, though. Combat Blitz, my friend! Blitzkrieg tactics, go! Oh my god, he's still just dancing with the tiger. This is just never going to work. And there's the GG. Wow, it wasn't even a GG, actually. He ran out of victory points. Andre clocked out of the game there by Jove. By Jove! And uh, uh, what to say about that game? Um, a gambit clearly taken by Andre Taranio. I don't think that was necessarily the full might of his uh, micro and strategic abilities, owing to the fact that he was never really able to dominate the field with the right unit composition. Uh, Joe, very smart with the, the units he picked, very smart with them um, going for the Comet. He saw a window there. He knew he'd been dominating the field, knew that he could delay for the Comet and get it out. And um, watching the Comet at Veteran C0 or, or, and kind of one, trading with the Tiger at Veteran C0, that really, really highlights the potency of that Comet. I mean, yeah, it had two squads of engineers repairing it, but damn, I mean, it did pretty well against the heavy tank there. Um, so, yeah, uh, Andre Taranio trying the sort of awkward gambit build. I don't think it really served him. I think it would do, but I think possibly this is not the best map for it. Not quite sure. I also think if you're going to do this, you need to commit earlier to going to Battle Phase 1 and getting your Life of the Mechanized Company. I also think it would probably behoove you, if you're going to delay the Life of the Mechanized Company, to obtain the Mechanized Assault Group call-in. Because that just gives you some Panzer Grenadiers, um, which, which could have been on the field earlier as a possible counter to the Commandos. You don't want to run Commandos into Panzer Grenadiers who are standing and shooting. It's not going to work. Um, so yeah, a good game played from both players. Very interesting to watch. Uh, I wonder if this was part of some kind of a tournament or something. I really hope so, but uh, no idea. So, uh, yeah, thank you to uh, all of my viewers out there. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is Magpie842 signing out.